Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, it is not that it is not for Allah to speak to a human being except through revelation, wahi, or from behind a veil, or he sends him a messenger so that he reveals what Allah wills with his permission. Indeed, he, Allah, is mighty and wise. This is taken from Surah Al-Shura, the 42nd Surah, Ayah 51. So let it be clear in our minds that the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not in need of having items or instrumentation for them to be revealed. They are not in need of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals revelation directly through wahi, revelation, or speaks from behind a veil to his slave, or sends a messenger to reveal what he wills. There are no wands. There are no magic hats. There are no palm leaves. There is no clairvoyance. There are no bent sticks, burning candles, or feng shui in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing His revelation. In order to convince people of His falsehood, shaitan employs certain tools for His false revelations. We will list some of the most commonly used tools. One of them is palm leaves. And I'm going to read a list of tools that are used. And we will speak about them, inshallah, and try to fortify ourselves with knowledge so we can stay far from them and keep our loved ones away from them. One of the tools is palm leaves or tea leaves as well, or using the cups or saucers of tea as magical implements. Some dabble in palmistry. Others dabble in crystal balls. Some use Ouija boards. Some use incense, seances, feng shui, clairvoyance, scrying, or cauldrons. Others prefer to use potions or voodoo dolls, special or sacred powders, tarot cards, sacred crystals. Some even go so far as to search out ghosts or to speak to the dead. And some enjoy the use of psychokinesis. We'll try to speak about some of these and to elucidate a proper response from the Orthodox Muslim to know what type of evil that we are dealing with. The first evil that we should deal with is the danger of palm and tea leaf reading or what is called Tassiography. This is where someone actually takes the tea leaves or palm leaves that have been used for making drinks and by reading the wrinkles in them when they are wet or dry and the striations on the underside or the lines that are made through its wetness or its dryness that they can ascertain certain unseen knowledge about someone's past, for example, the belief in reincarnation. So they will attempt to divine who you were in your past life, as they believe. Or they will attempt to divine prospects for money and wealth, or your profession. Perhaps they may even seek to use their divining energies to find out your future, how you will die, how many years you will live, how many children you will have, whether you will have the house of your dreams, and whether Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright or both of them will be in your life. Those that employ this 
false method of shaitan to lead people astray, used the teacup, an innocent device used for their evil. The practitioners of tessiography say that the teacup should be of wide, shallow form with sloping sides and that the person should not try to read in a shallow cup or a mug because it won't bring the full result, the reading, as they say, will be cloudy. In addition to this, they take hold of the actual leaves, which means that you won't be able to use the actual resin of the tea, of the tea bags as used today. They're using a dyed resin. Those that read palm or tea leaves actually buy their own leaves, and then they utilize the actual bag if the tea has been broken down and put into the bag. After dipping them and making the tea, the leaves are then taken and read. From there, someone's future is then divined. Now, those who use tea leaves also advocate the utilization of crystals to help with their intuition and successfully staring into the future. Some use stones such as agate, amber, bloodstone, and others. What these are used for, these actual crystals, is they take them and they actually stare into these crystals. This is a process called scrying. Now as they stare into these actual crystals for scrying, eventually after 15 or 20 minutes, images begin to appear. After those images appear, they can begin to try to divine the future of the subject that is in front of them. Candles are usually put on for palm and tea leaf reading, in which certain colors are thought to be more useful than others. Most readers of tea leaves and palm leaves prefer black orange, silver, and indigo, which they believe bind spirits and open the avenue for more spirits to come, as well as to make the guest feel safe from psychic attack. So the whole point of the palm or tea leaf reader is to open the door to the unseen so spirits of some sort may gain access to your home or theirs or wherever you are having the reading and they may then intermingle amongst the realms of the human beings that are there. Their use of candles is to make these spirits or these demons or whatever they are conjuring feel more at home, to feel safer. It is believed that by mastering the techniques of reading tea and or palm leaves, accurate and successful predictions can be made regarding money, past lives, sex, and or love, family, and other things. Every single aspect of the teacup to them is crucial. The bubbles that come up when the actual tea is being prepared to them represent money. The color in the spoons and even the actual areas of the cup they hold to represent different spheres and stages in the life of a devotee that comes to them. It is unfortunate but that in some parts of the Muslim world there are people who take part in this practice. And if they are not reading tea leaves or palm leaves, they go so far as to actually read the coffee beans or the coffee granules. And this is indeed disturbing. We have to be on our guard from falsehood and its grasp.